Hi, Dr. Keith, here again. <laughs> and I'm going to be talking to you about this little family of devices. Some of you have recognized it instantly. I've talked about it before. It's called a Violight, and there's a light applicator up my hooter. <laughs> and I'll explain that as we go along. But what I'm really here for is an update to this device. It's really quite spectacular in its day. It can do some wonderful things. But now we are even better. We're stages forward in the science. This is called multi-modular intranasal photobiomodulation, or MIN for short. So what the heck is that? Well, multi-modular means it has very, very many forms. Intranasal, you can see, in the nose. But photobiomodulation, well, that's become very big in recent years. And it actually just means that using tweaked light, it's given certain tweaked qualities to create biological change, which for us, of course, means healing. We don't want to produce any other kind of biological change, not really. Uh, anyway, over the years, I've been working in tandem with a major international company in Canada uh, who've researched and developed these devices and they hold very many relevant patents. Uh, as, as I said some years ago, I did a, a YouTube video explaining how this could reduce blood viscosity. Well, what's that? What's the point of that? What do you mean? Well, ortho, let's say orthodox medicine is just obsessed with the story of blood, fats and cholesterol and all that baloney story. They're trying to get us to believe, contrary to all the scientific evidence, that these are the important cause of blood. She does a very good job on that, so long as you don't meddle with her and try to force, you know, crank doctors trying to force their theories on nature. She does a good job of keeping us well. But the important thing is how thick the blood is, how sticky and sludgy. Think of pouring paint from a can. You know, it's very slow and sludgy and takes a long time to pour. That's because it's very viscous. That's the correct term viscosity. You could label it slow pouring, but anyway, vis viscosity is there. Listen, I'm going to take this out for now. <laughs> uh, you've seen it now, and I'm going to substitute a, a newer and better one anyway shortly. Now, if you pour water from a glass, of course it will gush. It's just very thin, in other words. It's just another way of important. Now, why is it important? Well, I explain it like this, really. If your blood is like ketchup, it'll go slowly through your blood vessels. In fact, in the capillaries of some tissues, it may not flow at all. But if your blood's like wine, it may flow freely. Now, I'm not saying only drunks have low viscosity blood. Uh, I'm just saying they're both red and a very different consistency. Low viscosity is important because nutrients and oxygen to the tissues, it can remove toxins and waste efficiently and carries uh, important signaling messengers like cytokines, hormones, and all those kind of things all around your body. But importantly, it means your blood is far less likely to clot. In other words, there's a much lower risk of stroke, myocardial infarction, that's a blood clot in the heart, and, the, and similar, often fatal, disasters. And even if the threat isn't so extreme, we do know, thanks to the work of Otto Warburg, that cancer loves low oxygen levels. So slow, gloopy blood would definitely favor pro-cancerous conditions, low oxygen levels. Mm, not good. But it's worse than that in ways that you might not think of. If your blood is very viscous and flowing slowly, it doesn't bring as many nutrients to the tissues, and that includes supplements, all the good things, all the good healthy things that you want to swallow, the good things you want to eat. You might be taking a whole bunch of good stuff, you know, herbs and vitamins, and actually not getting anything like the full value uh, because of this slow delivery process. It's like having a food delivery service, but all the trucks are running slow because of backed up traffic. Mm. So it's partly a waste of money, but also importantly, you might not be getting the benefits, the therapeutic benefits that you need, and this would be awful. You might think you're on top of a health problem, but in reality, you're not. If you can't feed and cleanse your tissues efficiently, then you're in line for serious disease, basically. And it goes out, I suppose, goes without saying, that you'll actually age faster. 
Now, I'm wondering when the pendulum is going to swing away from this nonsensical focus on blood lipid metabolism and move on to this very important issue of viscosity and clotting. Most fatal cardiovascular events are blood clots, they're not fat sludge. Duh! Anyway, now there's a new study from Edinburgh University in the UK that's shown just conclusively just how critical this matter of blood viscosity is. It's not the quality of the artery walls that matter. This is what they tell you, you know, the atheroma, the plaques inside your arteries. Oh, it's all bad news, but it's not that. It's the quality of the blood itself. It's the free-flowing liquid qualities versus sludging characteristics. And they say, they prove that blood viscosity is at least as important as two old favourites. That's blood pressure and so-called bad cholesterol in predicting death by heart attack. At least as important, it says. Plus, they showed that it's more important than smoking as a risk factor. So that's pretty important. It's so obvious, in fact, obviously important, that only doctors who are really making money and milking the system with all this outdated nonsense of cholesterol levels for a living, <laughs> that they're going to fail to act and will fail to re incorporate this new knowledge into patient care. Big Pharma, of course, will try and smother the research because cholesterol control in statin drugs are still their number one profit earner worldwide. They make countless billions, well not countless, but vast billions of profit, not just gross income, but actual profits. Anyway, the point is, you know, you're not going to get any help from the orthodox medicine direction anytime soon. So it's something you can do for yourself and you can work on your own blood viscosity. And that's why I'm shooting this video for you, really. Uh, and by the way, as well as all the sort of obvious, you know, health benefits that we've outlined, a, a, a smoother and more liquid and faster, freer flowing blood is also going to mean clearer thinking and less chance of dementia because of... Uh, you know, uh, bringing nutrients to the brain and clearing toxins and so on. So it's very important. And also, I think, obviously, it goes without saying, it's uh, you're less likely, you know, it slows down aging, in other words, because of increased cerebral blood flow. So in every sense, a uh, good thing to do. All right, so what? What's? why am I doing all this? Why am I talking to you now? Well, you know, the science has moved on, and there's a lot more to it now. We have a terrific proven way to reduce your blood viscosity. It's devices of this type that I just showed you. In fact, let me show you the new one. This is what it looks like. It's pretty similar. Uh, and let me fit one and then I'll talk while I'm wearing it and you'll see at least one of the differences anyway. Okay, so you'll see that's this is one of the first differences. I'm wearing two applicators at one. You don't have to do that, but it can be very useful to do two at once. One is uh, lowering inflammation with laser light. That's a good general health issue. Uh, and this other one, the grey one, is actually delivering near infrared, 810 nanometers. This is very good for stimulating, calming the brain, um, you know, building back brain health. You can actually grow new brain cells. Uh, we know a lot now for, about pulsed electromagnetic frequencies and their value. It works, I'm not arguing, saves lives, I'm not arguing, but they're expensive and they're very cumbersome. Uh, several thousand dollars, anything up to twenty thousand dollars or more. Well, there's another way, a better way like this, which is administering low-level laser light directly to the blood. Now, once upon a time that used to be done by putting a cannula in the person's arm, you would draw blood and then you'd squirt the, uh, the laser-treated blood back into the body. Uh, but it's so much easier. You just simply send the light up your nose. Now, you know, don't laugh. It's, it, it's a very easy way of doing it. Uh, you, can, you just shove it up your hooter and switch on. And I do this while I'm working at my word processor. There's a very good reason for using this route of administration 
which is that the nasal passages have a huge network of blood vessels, more than the brain actually when you look at a blood flow scan. Uh, just shining the light up your nose is the same or better than feeding laser laser light into rerouted blood. We don't want the risks of that. Uh, now, at this point, I'll, I'll drop in a I'll try and drop in a picture of me in a darkened room, and you can see just how brightly my nose is illuminated. It gets everywhere in your nasal passages, and it's very simple, very easy to do. But now next, I want you to look at some visual proof of how important it is. If you look at these two images, uh, the blood sample on the left is typical of what we see with normal, the average person's blood. Uh, the red blood cells are strung together in clumpy ropes. So these are called rouleaux, it's a, a French word. Uh, they're, they're electrostatically stuck together. Now these ropes, you can see visually really, they, they're clumpy, they won't flow through capillaries well, they don't take up oxygen so efficiently anyway, and, you know, in the lungs they're not free flowing, and they inhibit the function of immune cells by the way, so not good, right? Uh, so it's bad news all round, we don't want rouleau formation, thank you very much. But look at the image on the right. That's the effect after just a few minutes of low, low, low level laser light on the blood. As you wear one of these cute little devices for half an hour or so, 25 minutes actually. They're all separated from each other, they don't stick, they don't clump, and so blood viscosity is low as it should be. The effect of doing this lasts up to two days. So instead of sludgy blood threatening things like a stroke or a heart attack at any moment, the risk is dramatically less proven, uh, you know, in the ways I showed you above. And using this device four or five times a week will keep your blood permanently fluid, permanently low viscosity. So anyway, after a lot of searching around years ago, I came across the Violite. I think it's the best possible option for this viscosity treatment. Uh, now they've moved on and this new device is very sophisticated indeed. It will deliver 655 nanometers of laser light. Uh, in fact, there's another version using only LED light. That's the 633. So you'd have one or the other. The laser version isn't magic. It's all just light at the end of the day. But it will penetrate to a degree that's sufficiently bright to actually shine a certain amount of light energy up into the brain via the, the thin skull bones at the top of the nose, back of the nose. I consider the price ridiculously cheap when you compare it to a PMF device with similar capabilities. And look, it's it's tiny. It's so tiny it will fit in your pocket or your purse. You could take it anywhere. You can startle folks in the coffee shop by sitting reading with a laser light up your nose. Of course, we'd only surprise people for fun. We don't want to behave badly. It's completely safe. Just remember the obvious caution if you've got a laser version, which is not to shine the light into anyone's eyes. But there's more. Now the science has continued apace over the years. We now have a study showing, well, studies showing that intranasal photobiomodulation with laser light will help clear viruses. <clears throat> now you'll know probably which virus I'm thinking of. And sure enough, we have a study showing that the Violite device was beneficial in speeding up recovery time from COVID-19. In fact, one of this family, the, the Violite family, the RX Plus, has received Health Canada's approval for COVID-19 virus recovery. And there, the Health Canada, they're the equivalent, to the Canadian equivalent of the FDA. Mm, shh, don't tell anybody. Anyway, we know anyway from general research that blue light inactivates viruses and bacteria. It's antiseptic, if you like. Now, there's another very important innovation since I shot that first Violet video years ago, which is the latest models. You can, you can switch backwards and forwards. You know, well, you can do both at once, like I said, or you can switch from the 810 nanometers near infrared to the 655 laser. Uh, as I said, the, the near infrared, the 810, is, is gentle brain stimulation that helps you grow more brain cells, actually. But importantly, you can now switch the frequency from a relaxing, calming 10, 
10 hertz frequency, that's uh, Schum uh, not Schum that's alpha waves, uh, uh, which we all know is you know calming and relaxing, semi semi introverted, chilled in other words. Or switch it to forty hertz gamma, which is brilliant for focus and high energy. Uh, you can, by the way, these. Uh, I mean, I'm using two uh, two cables for two different applicators, but you can get two more. Uh, to add to the the set, if you want them, you can get a 470 nanometers blue light uh, applicator, which, as, as I said, is antiseptic, will help clear bacteria and viruses. Uh, and there's an LED version versus the the laser version, 655 versus 633. So if you put them together, the blue light, the near infrared, the LED version, the laser version, that's four different energy applications, all from this one little control device. So that's why it's called a multimodal intranasal photobiomodulation or MIP device. And it truly is amazing. You can see this is a big advance from the original breakthrough model. And yet just under $400, I think it's terrific value. Remember, more than one person can use it, so that reduces the cost and it will last at least 10 years, maybe 50 years or more. Nobody knows. They're well, <laughs> they're well made, but I mean, supposing they last 10 years, that's only 40 bucks a year. It's less than a dollar a week, for goodness sake. Uh, anyway, you can find a link to purchase the Violet um, the 655, which I think is a good starting place, the laser device. That's the one I use. So I put it on the page along with this video, uh, but also it's here in the video in, in text copy if you want to type it in and get yourself one of these. Now the, the Violet people, they're very nice people. They run a guarantee, they're not out to cheat you. They will look after uh, this product and your ownership of it. They have a good return policy. If you decide it's not for you, uh, then your product purchase is backed by a, a six month, no question, you know, return policy. In other words, you can send it back and you'll get 80% of your purchase price back. Well, of course, they, they can't give you all of it back because they can't then sell it. Once it's been used by somebody, they're not allowed to resell it as a, as a medical device. But you get full customer support, satisfaction guarantee, as I said, plus the warranty a product warranty. But remember, you won't get that if you buy one of these devices through unauthorized channels. By that, I mean Amazon and eBay, and people do try and uh, con you into buying them there, but you're not covered. You have to buy from uh, a recognized distributor, an authorized agent, as it were. Now, I'm one, of course. I've known these people for years. They know me. So you're well covered if you get this device from me. So once again, here's the link. And I hope you'll, if you've not already done so, you'll dip into photobiomodulation. If you're already familiar with it, maybe even have the early uh, Violight, the LED or the laser version. I think it's time to upgrade, get one of these. As I said, it's less than 400 bucks plus shipping. And it's brilliant and it'll do wonders for your health. Okay, thanks for listening. Take care.